We're here at Sailors Creek Battlefield State Park. The three separate engagements fought in this area on the evening of April 6th of 1865 will prove disastrous to Robert E. Lee's army. Earlier that day, his troops had marched through this area along the road behind me, heading west for Farmville. But a gap had developed between General Longstreet's forces in the front and those troops following along behind. Into that gap, rides the Federal Cavalry, particularly those men under George Armstrong Custer. About one mile behind the camera at the Marshall's Crossroads, General Richard Anderson and his Confederate troops who've moved through here will encounter that Federal Cavalry. This will be the first battle of Sailor's Creek. The resulting engagement there, General Anderson's troops will dig in, but the Union Cavalry will break through their lines, sending many of those men running for their lives. The second portion of the battle will occur here, General Richard Ewell commanding the Richmond Garrison Force, militia, reserves, heavy artillerymen, even what's left of the Confederate Navy will take position here along this hillside. Confronting them across the fields of the Hillsman Farm, you see in the distance, is the Federal Sixth Corps of Infantry. They will begin attacking this position. The Confederates here, for many of them, it's their first major battle, but they put up a good fight. They stop the first attack, but slowly they're overpowered. Savage hand-to-hand -hand fighting will occur up and down this hillside, some of the most brutal fighting of the entire American Civil War. But mercifully, it is brief. The Confederates here are mostly forced to surrender. General Richard Ewell himself is captured, along with General Custis Lee, Robert E. Lee's oldest son. The third portion of the Battle of Sailors Creek will occur at the Lockett Farm, about one mile to my right, to the north. There, General John B. Gordon and the 2nd Corps of Lee's Army will attempt to defend the wagon train against the pursuing Union infantry. Gordon is not able to protect all of the wagons, but he gets most of his troops out to fight again another day, and they will escape towards High Bridge to rejoin the rest of the Army. As a result of all three of these battles, these engagements collectively known as Sailor's Creek, happening at almost the exact same time, the Army of Northern Virginia has lost nearly 8,000 men, the vast majority of them taken prisoner. Eight generals are captured as well. Robert E. Lee coming upon the scene after it's too late to help will mutter, my God, has the Army been dissolved? Because that's surely what it looks like. On the Federal side, nearly 1,200 men are killed or wounded in this battle. A message will be sent from General Philip Sheridan to Ulysses S. Grant saying, if the thing is pressed, I believe Lee will surrender. Intercepting that message back at City Point is President Abraham Lincoln himself. Reading this, he sends a message to Grant saying, let the thing be pressed. Less than 72 hours later, these two generals, Lee and Grant, will confront each other in person at Appomattox Courthouse.